Hey everybody, let's talk today about deploying sensitivity labels to your organizations. Um, we'll cover what it looks like, we'll go into depth on options available for you to de deploy labels. I'll also give you the sample label set that I think you should start with to help your learning and testing of this system. Um, also show you a couple other resources from Microsoft that I think are pretty good and you should definitely be aware of. And then we'll just kind of go into the solution and explore all the options. So uh, let's get started and let's get into it. All right, so here we are in the Compliance Center and this is the place that we're going to use to deploy sensitivity labels in our organization. So uh, on, over here on the left hand side, we're going to go down to information protection. And this is the home of all of the sensitivity labels. The first thing you need to do when you get into the system is actually going to be activate sensitivity labels. Depending on when your tenant was set up and when those features were turned on, there might be a little bit of effort involved with setting it up. The place that you're going to do it is under this labels tab here. And in unfortunately, in this tenant was already pre set up by Microsoft, so I, I can't actually do it. Uh, but what you'll see is you'll see a yellow banner down here um, showing you the option for uh, enabling it. So here is that example for you. And so a lot of times we'll see this in older systems, you need to turn this feature on so that you get a really a better experience for your users as you activate it, right? So the first step, turn that on in your environment should be pretty painless. Um, if you previously use labels, you're, you're probably far beyond this. That was the only concern that I would have if you have not turned this on and you were using AIP labels, the legacy version, version 1.0, then you would you know, want to go through the process of migrating those labels, see if people are still using them, a little bit more in depth. Uh, but for now, I'm assuming you're not using it because you probably would know if you were using it. Activate this, you should be in a good spot. Second step that you're going to want to do is there's also going to be a SharePoint activation bar. It's not on this screen here, but there will be an additional uh, Teams integration where you can apply sensitivity labels to team sites. Go ahead and do that. You might need PowerShell for it. It has it pretty well documented. Uh, to turn that on and use those features. But once you're up and running with that, you can come over to information protection and start creating labels. When we create a label in this system, it will just sit in here until it's deployed out to users. So we have labels and then we have label policies. You can create thousands and thousands of labels and never have that be visible to your end, user, end users. Uh, it's not until you deploy a label policy that it will actually show to the users that you have selected. And so for our demo today, we're going to focus on building labels and then we'll deploy a label policy to a set of test users so that they can see them, demo them. And that might be a good option for you as you are looking at it. Okay, so let's start with building some labels. First thing I like to do is have a plan for what I'm going to design for my labels. So ideally you should have worked with your legal team before you go to production with this, you're going to want to work on some labels and, and design what works for you as a business. Now for me, uh, in this demo, I actually have that planning done and I'm going to show you what I think you should consider as like just an internal demo set of labels. So here is the labels that I think you should consider deploying out in your environment. And so uh, it's essentially a three label system with two sub labels for confidential, right? And this is the one I think is pretty flexible, kind of gives you the options to exploring and seeing what features that you're gonna do. Then ideally you'll take this option that you've seen here and then you'll build your own labels that work for you as an organization. So high level, what we're doing with this one is we're creating one label for public. Um, so this is data that maybe needs to be shared out. It's open to the organization, other organizations. If this got out, not a big deal. We have one for general data, and this might be a good option for you of all data in your organization starts out as general, and then you get the option to downgrade to public, or you get to upgrade to confidential. And this is a top level label that I'm going to do with two sub label options. This is again so that you can see the features available from Microsoft and you don't have to use you know, this schema. Obviously you can build your own, um, but this one can be helpful for exploring what, how things work. So we have again, public, general, and confidential. Confidential is gonna have two sets of labels underneath it. We're gonna do a 
uh, sublabels in here so that end users can pick what confidential means because sometimes confidential data should be available for people uh, outside the organization. And so we wanna give some options to the end users so they can say, oh, well, this is confidential, but I need to do this with it. All right, so the first one I'm gonna do is a recipient only one. And this to me is a lower level security option. This is a choose your own adventure for your end users. End users get to pick what label this label means. Uh, they can pick who can open it, who can do what with it. And then this is our standard one. So anytime an end user picks confidential, this is the one I want them to default for, which is internal use only, right? So this one, we as an IT folk or I, as a business have decided what confidential internal use only means. In this case, I am going to assign the permission out to this and say, anybody in our company should be able to open these files. Any of our trusted partners maybe get viewer only rights to it. And I'll go and show you these options. So that's a pretty good label schema. And let's go ahead and start building. All right, so let's deploy these labels out and we'll get them up and running. Again, I'm gonna use this guide uh, that I discussed before and you know just follow this, this schema down and just go down these documented options and kind of what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna focus on the groups and sites capability uh, today. I'm only gonna focus on what's needed to um, control file level access. So that's gonna be kind of our primary goal and we're gonna follow the schema and build it out real quick. So let's go ahead here and create a label. So in this case, we're gonna call it public and I'm just gonna pull all this content over from my spreadsheet. This name here is non-changeable once uh, you've deployed it. Um, so just know that this name is a permanent item and it can never be changed after we hit save on this label. Public display name, of course, is what the end user sees. So just be careful, right? You want to make this something, you know, not, uh, you know, because this is going to stay forever. So don't call it like, you know, George's test labels or something, you know, wild out there. Okay. Description for user. Again, when they hover over the label, this is what they will see. Admins, this is going to be your internal notes. I don't need to do that for this one. For scope, again, I'm only going to focus on files and kind of documents in the org. Sorry, we're going to only do items. And then for what actually we're going to do on this, we're only going to do um, marking, right? So we're only going to do a, a header in this case of for content. All right, so I'm going to turn on headers and we'll customize this step test. And in this case, I'm going to mark this as, you know, organization name public. All right. Um, I, as a, uh, as a policy only like to do uh, center line text for my headers. Again, you can do all, all of this, but you know, adjust to what you want, but I really like adjusting it to center because having it to be left, it, left is annoying. I'm also going to make the font green because that's using Microsoft's default system uh, or mechanism. Green is the color of public data for their, you know, their label system. So let's focus on that and we'll follow kind of a little bit of Microsoft's data pieces. Auto labeling, we're not gonna do auto labeling and we're not gonna do any of these other options. And now this is all done, right? So the first label created pretty easy. We're not doing anything too complicated with it. I'm not gonna publish this at this, at this point because um, we're gonna wait till the end when we have all of our labels created and then we'll go manually publish it. All right, so first label is created. Let's go ahead and create our Contoso general data piece. So, okay, come in. And again, I'm just gonna pre-fill this in. And data for your end users. Perfect. And then again, groups, uh, we're only gonna do items. And again, I'm only gonna focus on this label, a um, item marking. So I'm just gonna, again, do a header in this case so that we can have this flag for the end users uh, and you know have it in here. Again, I'm gonna focus on center alignment. And in this case, I'm gonna use the color uh, blue, right? So again, general data in this, right? Or Contoso business, gen, you know, whatever you wanna call it, um, we'll, we'll add in, that's yeah, fine. Uh, and again, marking in here, right? So the way, reason why I do these set of two labels is that this way end users have a, a default label that they can start with, all right? most of the organization data is going to be general and we're probably not at this point ready to do encryption on it uh, and so i like to have some options so that the end user can start at a baseline and then go public 
and they can be you know good and say they can say hey i want to remove some of the security options and make this publicly exposed and they have some like natural steps that they can do in this all right let's go ahead and create our confidential label as well so in this case i'm going to go ahead and create and all we're going to do for this one is use this as a container right so all we're going to do is put in the words confidential this is not really going to be something that you know we're going to do a lot for the end user all we need to do with this one is just set it up as a container in this case oh i forgot i have to do item uh, so in this case i'm not going to do any marking because this once once we convert this to a container level or a folder level label it won't uh you know be uh selectable by the end users be careful if you ever try to convert a label from a confidential to a, uh, a container level label, it can be a little bit difficult and can be uh, you know, hard to do that. Honestly, at that point, I would recommend creating a new label system. All right, so we got my three labels. Let's build out the sub labels for confidential. So the end user pickable options that are gonna be a little bit more complicated. So uh, in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a sublabel. So you click on the ellipses, hit add sublabel, and now we can build out labels inside of confidential. All right, so first one I'm gonna do is confidential direct user access. So for the name, I'm gonna put that in. And what's gonna be visible for the end user is going to be recipient only protected. I like to use this uh, quotes in here to show end users that this data is in fact encrypted and that they should take extra care with it. So that's kind of that option there. So um, that's why I kind of do that. And this recipient only one is gonna be the one that we allow the end users to pick what encryption means for them. So in this case, we're gonna actually do encryption on this item and we're gonna do marking with it. And under encryption, we're not gonna use this assign permission now option. We're gonna let the user side decide what they want. So once we do that, we have a couple of options to pick in here, right? So we can pick in Outlook, what does that mean for us? And so Outlook, we can come in and uh, basically use OME. So this kind of label here will be available in the Outlook client and user can click it and it will automatically trigger office message encryption, which is a great way to share out for the end user. Two options here, we have the encrypt and the do not forward option. This do not forward option, they both, they both encrypt, but the difference here is that whoever receives that email doesn't get the ability with the do not forward to send it outside of them, right? It's basically, they receive it, they can respond back to you, but they can't do anything else with it. So that's the one we're gonna pick because the description was, this is only for the recipient, right? And so we're gonna pick that one instead of this encrypt one where they could potentially forward it or download the message and have a copy of it. In Word and PowerPoint, what we wanna do is we gonna prompt the end user for what this means, right? So the end user gets a lot of granularity when it comes to this, where they can come in and say, hey, this Word document is only available for the C-suite. This is only available for, you know, George in our organization. He's He and me are the only two that should be able to see this data. And that's what this uh, user-driven permission is, okay? So we're set for the encryption on this. Again, for content marking, I'm gonna, uh, you know, still use a header in this case, and I'm just going to, you know, put in confidential in this case and you know mark it again red because it's confidential it's got to be red and center line that text and again you can do a footer watermark all of those capabilities there is also variables that you can do in here so if you wanted to tag the end user that put it in or their department you have a, a certain level of variables that you can do and, and i'll put a link to that in the the notes okay and again we're going to save all of this out and create it all right, so we got our first sublabel done. Again, I'm not gonna publish that out because we're waiting till the end. So now in here, I have you know, my first sublabel and we're gonna build out a second one. So this is gonna be the uh, internal use only label where we're defining what it means for end users. So again, internal name uh, in the system, confidential internal. And then for the display name for the end user, I'm gonna call it internal use only protected. Again, indicating to the end user that this is encrypted. So they can hopefully understand a little bit of the difference between the options there. Again, items only, and let's do both capabilities again. So assign permissions now, this is where we're getting into the meat of the deployment and how we can take advantage of these features here. Uh, so here under in assign permissions, 
first step that we want to do is figure out when this content expires. This is your capability to do something along the lines of like a self-destructing document, right? Where you can have a document that after it gets labeled is only available for 20 days. So maybe this is like a, um, a sow that you have out to your end users where after 20 days, it's no longer available. You revoke access to everybody that you send it to. Um, or maybe it's a project that, you know, is going to be closing out. And so, um, right, you can come in and say, you know, on XYZ date, all documents associated with this self-destruct and are no longer accessible to the organization. Right. So you have some of those capabilities. I don't see these used that often, but it is available. It's kind of a nice, uh, again, tool in your backpack if you need it. Um, I'm going to recommend you start with never for this one. Allow offline access. Think of this as how long your end users should uh, have this token cached uh, available for accessing these files. So an end user signed in and they disconnect their internet and they, they're they using their files on their computer without an internet connection. How long do you want to support that? If we set this to always, it's basically, I think it's like 30 days that the token lasts on their machine and they can be offline before they need to re-authenticate again or uh, re-authenticate by checking their user account or just going online. So it's for the end user, it should be pretty seamless. Um, however, I like to set this to a number of days equal to three. So I like to think of this as, you know, a good option for a long weekend, right? Maybe they're in the sticks and working offline on a file. It's pretty rare nowadays that people are working offline. Maybe it's just a flight or something like that. But I like to think of this as if someone left your organization, authenticated, kept their files, how long should they be able to stay access to the file? And how long should these files have to check in to say, yep, John still has an active account before he was deleted. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pick that out. Again, for some documents, you might say never. Online access is required all the time to access this. And we have that capability. So maybe your most secure files, you can do something along that line. All right, and here's the thick of where we're actually gonna build out our permissions. So this is where we can come in and declare out who can open the, the file. So in this case, for an internal use only, I am gonna say all users and groups in my organizations. This is the default one uh, that I tend to use. And what you'll see is this puts in your tenant name for you, and this is my, my tenant from Microsoft that I'm using this demo lab on. And this is where we can come in and choose what their role should be, all right? So again, this capability gives you features such as declaring what end users can do with it. So um, by default, whoever labels the file gets owner rights, right? So they can do everything with it because they're the creator or author of the document, they're the owner. Now, who else in the organization should have permission to it? If you wanna do what end users most expect, give them co-owner rights. And that'd be the place that I would recommend starting with, but this might not be kind of where you wanna end your label with. But for me in this demo and this option, I'm gonna give myself co-owner rights to the org and mark it in here, okay? And so this is where this group now has co-owner rights to the org, and that'll be the, the most uh, uh, that they're familiar with it. Now, you can layer permissions. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to think about as you design your labels is, what layering are you gonna do for your labels? So in this case, I can again, come in and choose all org users in my org. Maybe I'm gonna just choose authenticated users. So this is anyone with a Microsoft account. We can actually just say, hey, I need you to authenticate. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're using a outlook.com account. I don't know if you care if you're using a, <clears throat> a Doug S. Baker account, something. You have to authenticate at some point to access this. And this is that capability here. So we can target groups, we can target external domains, we can target our you know, um, other organizations. So we can use this with like a sister or, or a partner organization to say anybody at contoso.com or anybody at dougasbaker.com can open these files, not just authenticated users. And so we can target all those capabilities. Again, on permissions, we can also target and choose what permissions those users get, right? So in this case, maybe you're gonna say, everybody in the world can get viewer rights to these documents and we can toggle this down. What you'll see is that we get a lot of flexibility in here, right? So we can come in and say, they just have view, <clears throat> no edit, no save, no print, no copy and paste, right? Screenshots is actually included in this 
copy and extract content capability here. So when we take away this rights and only give them viewer, it'll actually block them from doing screenshots, which can be very cool, right? So you can choose and layer in these permissions and program them in, in. program them, program them in. That was hard word today. All right, so this is what it'll look like when you layer those permissions. All right, so you might need to come in and out if you want to do different sets of permissions in here um, and have it go through. So in this case, uh, all users in my tenant have, you know, co-owner rights, but anybody in the world can get viewer rights in this case or custom permission. I'm going to delete this because that's not a part of the label. I just wanted to show you that feature because I think it's cool. And then let's do our content marking again. Okay, so we're going to do uh, again confidential and we'll do again red and center okay so that's our label we're good to go now uh, auto labeling is an option as well Ooh, skip back and forth there uh, so this is using again the sensitivity of the document or the data that's in the document and we can you know automate labeling or suggest to the user that they label a file and so that can be very helpful um, in a lot of organizations um, i'm not going to start with that today i just want to deploy out these set of labels uh, but i'll come back and show you that option in another video okay so we're set on this one let's go ahead and create it all right, so we should be good here to go. We have our labels deployed and, uh, or we have our labels created. Now it's time to deploy those labels. So again, I have three labels in my org with the confidential having two sub options available to it. So in this case, again, public, general, confidential, recipient only, and internal use are those sub labels. This priority, this, um, ordering really does matter for your org, right? So essentially when we get into our deployment, we get some options of what happens when an end user goes from confidential to public. And this is where this label ordering comes in. So think of this as zero lowest being the most permissive access or the least secure option in your organization. And this highest order here being the most secure. And so that's, it's very important that you order these in that correct order for you, right? So if end user marks this as public, that's the, that's the least secure option for me. And so we want to come in and have that in here. Okay. All right. So I have these deployed or created. Let's go into a label policy and let's look at what it takes to deploy it. I'm going to go publish these labels and I'm going to select all of them. So we can select all of these labels in a uh, kind of deployment option here and we can make them, you know, just available for one set of users and we can intermix who gets what labels. So maybe your baseline in this case, what I'm going to do is my baseline, everybody gets these labels, but maybe you're going to create a departmental label at some point, like a HR label or accounting or finance label or a legal label. And you're only going to deploy that out to users, a single set of users. We can do that with the system. All right. So we selected that. Let's go ahead and choose who it's going to go to. The default, of course, is all users in our org. Don't do that, right? <laughs> You're testing. You should scope this down to a set of test users. So in this case, <clears throat> I'm going to make this available to a couple of users in my org uh, just for testing purposes. We can also target <clears throat> a, uh, a group and put that in. So in this case, I have four users selected. Only these four users in my org are going to get the labels, uh, which is kind of the goal. All right. So getting into the settings on here. Let's pick what options we get for those users. So in this case, um, I really like this one. So users have to provide a justification for removing or lowering the label. Again, that was that relates to that order priority. So public, if someone goes from confidential to public, <clears throat> I'm gonna require them to fill out, why are you doing that? And it'll log it in the system that they remove the label and their business reason for it. Uh, for this demo, I'm not gonna require users to uh, apply label to them, uh, but it's something to think about, right? You might want to do that. You might want to start everything in the organization as general, or in this case, just require them to pick something, right? This will force that end users to use that solution, but it can be an aggressive solution. So you really want to think about this before you turn this one on, before you create a default label that's applied to everything in your, you really want to go through a lot of testing phases before you can do that. Uh, Power BI content is also labelable from Microsoft. Yeah, that's a great feature set. If people are making very sensitive data pieces in Power BI, a lot of a lot of sensitive data can be uploaded to it. 
we can actually force them to label that data sets and then all the exports that happen also get that label on them. So if an end user hits export from you know, Power BI data set with all of your confidential data, it will actually take an export to that option. And custom help desk page, we can also do that as well. So I'm gonna fill this out real quick and put in my blog, which is you know interesting. Default label option. Do you want a default label? In this case, this could be again where you start everything that the end user creates, which is taking away you know the requirement that they have to intervene, right? In this case, general business data, all orgs data starts as general, and then they can go up to confidential or down to public. Uh, the various options there. Again, I'm not going to do that for this, um, but something to think about. Email, we also get that same option. A lot of times, if I see an org using a uh, document default label, they will most likely not do a email label. One also, uh, gotcha if you're gonna use a default label. Don't use a default label in email that has encryption. It can be a very frustrating experience, right? If you started out, out as every email starts as confidential internal use only, it's a great feature, but however, it might be very frustrating to the end user. Every time they want to send an email out, they have to not just tag the external user, they actually have to go in and change the label to public or something like that. So just make sure if you're doing labels on email, you're doing either an open label like these or, you know, just don't do it at all. All right, so I'm gonna put none on this one and go through. Power BI, same type of thing, right? We have those options. And this is what we're gonna call our baseline label. And now we have our baseline set up and ready to go. And we can hit submit. Oops, I did not put a valid help desk URL. Probably doesn't like that. There we go. And so now we're deployed out to our environment. Okay, so you saw that note, 24 hours for the labels to be created. It's usually a lot faster than that. However, a couple things you will note that will be slow. Any of the labels that have encryption in them, they take you know a full day for it to be start usable for you as an org. The default general public and confidential labels might be available in five minutes. Um, to get your office client to download them, all you need to do is reboot your office, right? So close all your Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, and then reopen it. And if you're signed into Microsoft, you should get those labels available to you for testing. Um, so that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Pretty long video so far. Um, we'll come back and we'll do some testing with these labels and show you what they look like uh, in another video. If you have questions or what you would like to see next, um, let me know. I'm happy to start talking about some of the other things. I think in the next video, I'm gonna focus on uh, how this looks in Microsoft Teams. Um, and we'll go with those options and so you can explore. Maybe you don't wanna label data, but you wanna label team sites and do some of those permissions there. So I'll show you that feature and the capability next. All right, have a great day, everybody. Hope this helps out.